Welcome to another episode on the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to extinguish all of the warning lights that are on in the dash. So this thing has some electrical gremlins and I'm gonna to try to sort those out as quickly and cheaply as possible. If you recall from the first video, we've got an SRS warning light, a check engine light, two brake lights, two brake warning lights, I should say, a tire pressure monitor light, and the odometer is flashing. So let's see what we can do to get those to go away. When I went to buy the car, I brought my scanner and I've got Alpha OBD on it, which is a fantastic software if you don't know about it uh, for Chrysler vehicles. So when I checked it there, it said an, an open, I think it was an open squib on the driver's seat. So seat airbag. So let's, uh, let's connect it again. Connected to restraint control module. Then we go to check. Read all fault codes, faults found, B0020. Left side seat deployment squib one, open circuit. So that's saying that the driver's, driver's seat side airbag has an open circuit. So that could be a wiring issue in the seat, a wiring issue anywhere in the system. It could mean the airbag is, has gone bad and it's got an open circuit. So the first thing I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the upper cushion off of the seat so I can see which wires go to the airbag module. And then I'll unplug the plug under the seat and check the resistance across those. Definitely with the, um, We'll disconnect the battery before we do any of that stuff. And um, for, my, for my work, I do airbag deployment testing and we generally see the ohm rating, the ohm, the ohm reading between like high twos and low threes. So let's see what we get. And if we show an open circuit in that wiring, then it'll probably be easiest just to find a used seat and replace the whole thing. Since how this one already has um, a tear in the seat bottom anyway, so um, let's go ahead and do that. Well, I'm a dumbass, so I didn't even have to take the seat cushion apart. There's a separate plug here that goes up to the seat back with our two wires for the seat airbag. So let me get this connector taken apart and then we'll check the resistance across here. All right, now ideally this won't blow the side airbag, and it shouldn't as long as we don't have any static charge here. Now let's see if we keep an open circuit or if it gives us two to three ohms of resistance. Hmm. All right, it's giving me 3.0, 2.9. So that's... I would say that's probably within spec. We're still working on this airbag code. Now I went in and did what I should have done to start with, and that was just try clearing the codes. I found a work order from a couple weeks ago where it had where the car had a dead battery and they had to jump it and then they replaced the battery. So maybe it just has a brain fart. So I'm in the airbag uh, module now and we've got no fault codes. So apparently it was just something with the connection under the seat and disconnecting and reconnecting the plugs fixed it. So if that error comes back, then I guess we'll look into it further. So for now, one light has been extinguished. Next gremlin I'm tackling is the parking brake warning light. And the in I've got an invoice from the dealer that the previous owner took this in because the parking brake warning light was on. So they found, they took out the trunk here and they found that the connector and the module were corroded. So looking down in there, yeah, there was some corrosion in there. And I have no idea where it's coming from because there's no evidence of any water or leakage in here. There's no mold anywhere. There's no discoloration on anything. 
So I don't know how the moisture got into the connector itself, but whatever. So first thing I'm going to try before replacing anything here, I just took some electrical contact cleaner, sprayed it inside the plug, sprayed it down in here. I took a paper clip and went down inside the small terminals. I had a spade connector, so I sprayed contact cleaner in there and ran it in and out a few times, wiped everything off and dried it. So the connector looks pretty good. There's still a bit of corrosion down on the plastic of the module, but um, I cleaned up the terminals pretty good, sprayed it down and ran a pick over them to try to get the corrosion off of them. So I guess let's try this. We'll just connect it, hook the battery up, see if the light goes away. Hopefully that's all it was. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Mm, everything is still on. All right, we're in the ABS module and it's throwing a code still for lost communication with park brake control module. So the module itself may be fried. Well, here we have a replacement control module from a salvage yard. I bought it off of eBay and exact same part number. Hopefully it's a plug and play thing. Um, I already cleaned out the, uh, the connectors in here. This one is not corroded like the one I have currently. So let's see if this will actually extinguish our light. All right, got the module in and plugged in and I turned the key on and hit the parking brake and the parking brake is working. But I still have a service park brake warning. So let's go into the parking brake control module and see what it's yelling about. I suspect it's yelling because that's out of a different car so it doesn't know what to do. I've heard something about a proxy alignment which I guess aligns all of the control modules in the car. VIN missing mismatch. Okay. So now we've got to go into ah, body configuration somewhere. All right, under the body control module, there is a proxy alignment if you go into the little car. So let's hit start. Proxy configuration is incorrect. Run proxy alignment procedure. All right, I got it working. So you can see it's coming, it's coming down through the page, writing configuration to all of these modules. Finished. If there are failed write checks, turn key to stop and wait for power latch to complete. Okay. So we'll say OK. We will back out of all of this. So it said successful on all of the rights. And the parking brake, the electric parking brake warning light went out. Let's back out of that. Turn the key off. Yes. It's happy. Both of the brake lights are out and the odometer stopped flashing. So, perfect. Took care of that with a $65 control module, used control module. Well, now that the car is happy about the parking brake, I guess we'll put all the trim back together in the back and then we'll move on to the check engine light. And the only code that it was throwing was for the active grill shutters. And as I mentioned in the previous video, this is most likely the culprit. So we have a severed wire that goes over to the grill shutter motor. And this was from the accident because right, right here, it goes over the aluminum bumper support. 
and it just sheared it off. So I can fix this, that's not an issue. Here's our wire harness out on the workbench. We got it marked where I wanna go back, how far back I wanna go. So we just have three wires, red, black, and a white with a brown tracer. So I've got red, white, and black. Uh, this gauge is, this gauge wire is pretty small, so this is bigger, so that'll be fine. And I've got my electrical tape, wire strippers, and the really handy low solder, or low temperature solder connectors. And I'm gonna check this spot, because it's, it's really compressed. So I just wanna make sure there's no broken wires there. I'll unwrap it and check it. But otherwise, we'll just piece in some wire, make sure it's long enough and should be good to go. I'm just about done with it. I've got the wiring all done. And when I, after doing two of the wires, I took it over to the bumper to make sure that it fit correctly. And it does. Um, I ended up, I'm about a quarter inch longer than it was before, but that's fine. And if you're doing this yourself, keep in mind that you want, you'll probably want to stagger your repairs because the, um, these heat shrink tubes have a little bit of uh, bulk to them. So I've got the red one the longest and then the white one and then the black one. That way they still fit inside the conduit. So this conduit's fairly small and it also has two more wires going over to the fog light. So try to keep it as tight as possible. So we can shove these in here. And when you're using the heat gun, be aware that this cable conduit is extremely low temperature plastic and it melts very easily. So just keep that in mind. Got everything tucked in there as best we can. So we'll just tape it up and it'll pretty much look like factory. Good as new, took about 45 minutes, and like I said, maybe two or three dollars worth of materials. I've got it plugged into the grill shutter. I'm just gonna turn the key on and try to clear the code and see if that check engine light goes away. Now let's go ahead and read our fault codes. I think that's the same one we had before, lost communication, so clear faults, yes. Read fault codes. No faults found. And with that, the check engine light has been cured. The final warning light I'm going to try to extinguish is the tire pressure monitor warning light. So it's on because it says that the right rear tire uh, the tire pressure monitor is dead. So I went to Harbor Freight and bought a $60 tire changer. So hopefully that'll uh, break the bead down so I can replace it. It's for 60 bucks. I mean, if I have to do this two or three times, it, that's what it would cost to take it to a shop to break it down and swap the sensor. So I went to, on eBay and bought a set of four sensors for $30 and they're the correct megahertz, 434 megahertz. So hopefully I can break this down and swap it and the light will go out.
Well, it was pretty quick to swap this. It took, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes to, from start to finish. And one thing, the instructions for the tire changer, um, it says that you need to bolt it down to something, but I didn't feel like bolting it down to anything, so I just put it under the front bucket of the tractor. That seemed to work well enough. Um, now the reason, I'm guessing the, the sensor went bad in here, and when they had tires put on it recently, they just stuck a regular, a regular valve stem in it. So now I've got the new one in it. Um, I guess all that's left to do is just to air it up and put it on and see if the light goes away. And with that, all of the warning lights on this electrical nightmare Cherokee have been extinguished. Now, some of them may come back or may get new ones in the future, but remember when I bought it, the guy said, oh my God, this thing's just an electrical nightmare. So as a summary, it had a check engine light, which was repaired for free. All I had to do was repair a wire harness. The um, airbag light was on, that was repaired for free. All I had to do was clear the code. Uh, the tire pressure monitor light was on, that was fixed with $30 in sensors and a $65 tire changer if you want to include that in there also. The parking brake warning light and the associated brake warning light, uh, that was repaired for $65 for a used module. And the flashing odometer, uh, that was repaired by repairing the parking brake issue. So all in this electrical nightmare car has been fixed for $150. So I don't think that's too bad. So it just goes to show you that if you are mechanically handy, you can save yourself a lot of money. Because if you would have taken this car to a dealer or a shop or something to do all of these things, they would have charged a small fortune just in diagnostic fees to find the issues here. So thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to keep up with the rest of the repairs and whatnot on this project.